This and each and every episode of the Hook It podcast is supported by 35 Bikes. And 35 Bikes are dedicated to bringing you the best bike components for the best price. So if you're in the market for some new brake pads, maybe a narrow eye chain ring, mud guards, or even some brake rotors, just head to 35bikes.com. That's 35bikes.com. And you can use promo code PODCAST to claim 10% off any order and also free shipping. This episode is also supported by Saks Underwear, and Saks make the best boxer shorts on the planet. In fact, National Geographic recently said these are the best men's boxer shorts on the planet, so it's not just me that thinks it. Each pair of Saks Underwear features their ballpark pouch, which is a little 3D-shaped hammock, which basically cradles your gentleman's nether regions, and it feels amazing. If you've never worn any, head to saksunderwear.com or... You can just contact your local bike shop or just search Saks Underwear online and you can find out where to grab a set. There you go. Let's get on with this podcast. Welcome to the Hook It podcast, endorsed by at odub underscore 23. Uh, Add me, tag me. Follow, Follow me. Please follow me. What's going on podcast fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Hook It podcast. This is episode number 28. Can you believe it? 28. We're almost 30. Creeping in. Like life. We're creeping towards it. Um, Just about thawed out after Fort William. Unfortunately, it rained right at the end of Sunday, just as we were about to pack up and uh, it made for a soggy drive home all the way back to Sheffield. But hey ho. Kind of leads me on to saying a huge, and I mean huge, thank you to every single person who headed over and said hello at Fort William. It was insane to meet some of you guys, like people who have obviously been engaging with the podcast for a little while, uh, people whose Instagram tags I know, and uh, it was just overwhelming to say the least, people who came over and said hello, and and it was good to meet you guys. Yeah, thanks again. Also, uh, thank you to everyone who didn't come to Fort William, who's been leaving feedback dropping us a quick message, all that sort of stuff since the last couple of episodes. That's uh, It's obviously much appreciated. And if you haven't already, please head over to iTunes and leave us a review. It really helps. And uh, that's about it. Not much else to report right now. Um, we've got Steve Jones on the show, so it'd be, be rude to hold this thing up. Steve is obviously one of the, one of the head dudes at Dirt Magazine, um, an industry celebrity, and a very well-respected gentleman within the bike industry. So... Without further ado, let's welcome Steve Jones to the show. Let's do this. All right, dude. Yeah, we're recording. Um, yeah, I can almost, I, I can't breathe properly, but we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you breathe properly? <laughs> so, just lit an incense stick in the room where I record this podcast, which is a really small room, and um, uh, I've only just bought these today. In fact, Mark, who is one of the owners of Hook It With Me, gave me this pack yeah. of incense sticks, and they are... It's what, like, flavor, what, what flavor are they? I don't know. It's all written in Indian, but okay. I can de- I can taste it, man. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's keep, like, I'm glad we got the incense talk out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my wife burns it, and I have to come in the house and just check it out the window as a candle it. Really? Yeah, but I, so I know where you come from. <laughs> I'm a bit of a hippie like that. Um, <laughs> right, Steve, welcome yeah. to the Hook It podcast. Much appreciated, man. I really appreciate you doing this. It's really oh, good of you. Thanks for um, thanks for inviting us. It's all right, no problem at all. Uh, just yeah. woke up from a little nap, which uh, which is nice at six o'clock. It's beautiful. Who you have, or I have? You have. I wish <laughs> I, I had. have. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, been a long day. Yeah, you said. Is it? Uh, yeah. You've been out on a video thing, right? Yeah, uh, it's been out doing um, a video on a Caliber Bosna, actually. So, nine hundred ninety-nine pound bike. Okay. That's uh, the bike that won. Oh, did it win Trail Bike of the Year? Yeah, it did in uh, in NBR magazine, yeah, that's and right. uh, we we we've ridden it, and it was in the Dirt One Hundred last year, and 
you know, it proves that you, you know, you don't have to have carbon or flashy paint jobs. If you've got good geometry and good sizing, then it's, um, mm. there's no excuses basically. So yeah, great bike. That's cool. Um, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Actually, there's a question I've got for you about it, but, um, is this obviously your first podcast? Uh, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> Do you listen to them all or not? Uh, I, to the hook it ones. No, no. Oh man, I I wouldn't want you to listen to this. <laughs> I, I, I have been I've been listening to some. I, can, uh, I listen to um, to Ollie Wilkins and yeah. uh, Ed Masters last night. Yeah, oh, awesome. So this is yeah, appreciate. That's it. great. Good Thanks, job, dude. man. Thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. It was good to catch up with those guys. Actually, like I'd never met Ollie until the weekend. Um, spent a bunch of time with him um, over the Saturday and Sunday up at Fort William. Same with Ed Masters. Character. Both him. characters. Oh, he's Both definitely characters. a character. He definitely, but well, they both are. Um, Ollie yeah. literally never stops smiling, which I think is amazing. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having him on this thing a few more times too, because I yeah. think uh, there's a lot more stories to tell and laughs exactly. to be had. Yeah, he's, yeah, a, he's a good entertainer. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair though, man, like every single guest I've had on this thing has been amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone comes on like really open to do it. Um, I think out of everyone, you've probably been the most nervous. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> well, like you know, I was emailing back and forth. And you were like, "Oh, I don't know." <laughs> but I don't know if the word is nervous, but maybe just unsure what maybe, was going to happen. Maybe slackness rather than nervous. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> maybe you thought I was just going to grill you like some <laughs> some interviewer. Yeah. Well, no, that's fine. That's totally, it's totally fine if you want to do that. I mean, it's good to uh, be on the other side of the uh, microphone, so to speak, isn't it? Yeah, that's the cool thing, though, because you spend so much time doing it yourself. Like, it must be kind of yeah. strange being on this side of it not even that you're on this side like but you know i don't really plan these things too much it's just about having a having a conversation yeah um, I mean, you know that you know most of the time that's what it's that's what it's about it's about having a conversation because mm -hmm. you know if you go in there with you know whoever you're talking to if you go in with a fixed set of questions you don't you just come to dead end so you yes. kind of you know you've got to you got to be open about it and um <sighs> Yeah, and sometimes you know, sometimes it's good not to not to talk about bikes or stuff like that with Definitely. you know, you know, for example, um, like I was with Aaron Gwynn kind of a month ago, and you know, we talked about bikes, and yeah, it was okay, but you know, they got you know, they've asked, they've been asked those questions a zillion times, so you you can talk about shoes or yeah. pants or anything like that, you know, <laughs> it's, they they generally haven't got an answer for it, so it's it's got to come straight out of the head. So uh, I agree. Yeah. That's yeah, been like, just, with this thing, that's been one of the major learning curves is like, a kind of the first, I'd say up to 10 episodes were literally just like, I wouldn't say mates, but like people I know like quite well. So it was really yeah. easy to just sit down and just have a conversation. But then we started edging towards people who I'd never met, who I didn't really know much about. Um, yeah. The major one for me was Luca Shaw. So like right, okay. Luca came on just after he'd signed for the syndicate. The syndicate yeah. video had just come out, like the team launch. So the internet had blown up about it. Yeah. And then I had him on here and like, I was like freaking out. I'm like, right, what do I ask him? <laughs> you know, I barely know anything about this kid. I'm being honest, but like, and after the first like 10 minutes, we'd blown through every single question I had written down and I'm like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you do now? So yeah, yeah. you've got to, uh, you've got to imp improvise or, exactly. just, or just carry on chatting about shit. So yeah. it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy really. And that's, that's generally where you get the better stuff. I think so. Yeah. yeah. It seems to be that way. Like now I literally make a few little notes, but it's like, just have a conversation and whatever comes out and feedback seems to be, that's what people like to listen to. So hopefully that's what I can, uh, I can give yeah. people. Um, so yeah, so far so good though, man, with this thing. I mean, I don't mean our episode. I mean like, in general, <laughs> um, this is the 28th episode, which is insane. I can't believe we've made it to 28 episodes, if I'm honest. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. nuts. Nearly 30. Um, it's creeping up. It's like I just said in the intro, actually, it's like life. It just creeps and creeps and creeps up, and all of a sudden, you're at 30, and hopefully it doesn't yeah. start going downhill from here, but we'll <laughs> time will tell, I suppose. So this, so this is from Sheffield, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, great city. It is, mate. The scene is pumping in Sheffield. Um, and it has been for quite a while. It's an amazing place to base a bike company um, or a, a distribution company. The scene's really click. I wouldn't say the scene's clicky, but the scene's quite big. Everyone knows each other. Um, and obviously, yeah, well, you got you got everything. I mean, you got the hills. You have got a great city to go have booze in. You have got some great nightclubs. So I remember going to one. Um, this is the lead mill. <laughs> yeah, the lead mill. Yeah, it's still going. Man. I, remember, 
remember going there kind of when I was in uni, but okay. uh, that's quite a long time ago. Did you never come up for any of the like, um, like Pete did his, um, oh God, Steve's film, God, what the hell, mind blank. Um, uh, well, back last down time, Premier. last time I went up to Sheffield was yeah, was at the what that was at the World Back One Back Down Premier. Yeah, um, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's cool, really cool. Uh, I love it here, man. Like, I wouldn't change it honestly. I think it's cool, um, and it's weird because I spend so much time like in and out of bike shops around the country, and most people always say like, "Oh, you're from Sheffield? That's rad!" Like, I heard this is happening. You've got the Steel City downhill, or you know, this talk of this new. Um, bike park too which is amazing yeah. like that could be insane for the city so um yeah. I, I think the time for that last time I was in Sheffield was uh I think time for that was with Joe Bowman looking oh, at yeah. 510 stuff and time for that was I think it was actually driving Petey around in my in my Peugeot 106 because he had a broken leg and we went and bought some Stellas down at some supermarket oh, does Steve drink does he <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's just a front, that is. It's just a kind of, uh, it's one of the most clever marketing things in uh, downhill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very good job he does of it, though. They're all filled with water, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I can tell you something. Uh, I was looking at some pictures of the day. Um, when, when Steve won Fort William in 2005, um, I was out the night before with him and our Brendan and Mark Beaumont and I can assure you that he had many Guinness on the eve of his first uh, UK World Cup win really? and uh, yeah it just it's just pretty phenomenal really and then the next day uh, at lunchtime before his just before his run uh, well a couple of hours before his run I was having having lunch and um, I mean the idiot was having a couple of glasses of wine I just couldn't believe it and uh <laughs> And to go to go from that, uh, if I had a couple of glasses of wine, it would be game over. But um, yeah. from there, you know, you went you went to win Fort William in two thousand and five, and it was uh, wow. yeah, it was just amazing, absolutely amazing moment in time that was. But it's weird that stuff like that sometimes um, just takes the nerves out of things, doesn't it? Like a bit of adversity or just really chilling out into racing, like probably does help these guys. It probably helped now yeah. because it's become so more serious than it probably was back then, and a bit more like. Do you think? Do you think it's become more serious? From the outside looking in, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But maybe if you know, if I was inside, like working with a team, you probably would see the other side of it. If that makes sense. So yeah, I don't know. Like, has it become more serious? I don't know. I hope not. Um, uh, well, I guess I guess downhill is no athletes now, I and mean, that kind of that changed like ten years ago. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A lot more on the, a lot more at stake, I guess. Definitely, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But um, all right. So, if it's okay, so you, can ask, you can ask me some questions. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be like a quick fire round. <laughs> no, sh- really awkward ones too. Nah, not all, man. Um, what I like to do usually is just get whoever's on here to do like a really brief introduction to yourself, just because um, I don't want to like Seriously? miss anything. Yeah, if that's all right. I mean, <laughs> just really brief, just like you, you know, your uh, your waist, your shoe size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got a big ass. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a super brief one, like what you do day to day, that sort of thing. What I do day to day is well, uh, can, can I do a bit of everything? Obviously, I work for for Dirt Magazine, Dirt Mountain Bike. Um, day to day, what do I do? Um, I take photographs, I make videos, I write loads of words, um, I ride bikes. Um, I interview people, I crack it off, so I do. Um, <laughs> loads of things, really. Again. Take naps, take naps during the day. Just... Have, have, have a nap now and again, yeah. <laughs> uh, do loads of, uh, do a lot of travelling. Uh-huh. Um, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, it's perfect, mate. Absolutely perfect. That's really, yeah, yeah. nailed it, yeah. I think. I don't want to, like, do anyone any injustice and miss anything out that, like, you do and yeah. I've, I've not said anything, which is probably happened yeah. already I'm so yeah that, i've so. been doing it uh been doing it since um crikey been doing it since around 2000 something like that uh okay i guess i raced downhill from 1996 um yeah that's about it really perfect so 1996 so you're racing downhill um yeah, yeah. that's when dirt magazine started is that right yeah dirt started around then yeah, yeah. But obviously I, you weren't involved initially or 
Uh, no, not at all. I mean, I was just racing, and uh, the the kind of only relationship was because dirt was you know covered covered downhill racing. You know, it was one of the one of the first mm. first publications to do that. So um, yeah, there's always been a close uh, close contact there. Yeah, I was thinking back today, like writing a few notes down about the first time I ever saw Dirt magazine. Um, yeah. And I was I was really young. It was probably around like 96, 97, probably actually like 98 actually because I remember a yeah. certain photo in there. Uh, it used to have yeah. some motocross stuff in it. And right. I just I remember just buying it and just like literally plastering my bedroom walls in that one magazine. Like Probably like wow. most kids out there around my yeah. sort of age. That's the thing. Like, yeah, I did it. I mean, I used to kind of uh, plaster my wall with loads of motocross riders from the 70s like Roger De Costa and okay. people like that. But yeah. but yeah, yeah, I did exactly the same thing. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever listened to any of the ones a bit further back of these episodes, but I am quite partial to talking a bit of motocross and I have to stop myself because right. <laughs> I'm a huge moto fan um, and I just go on these epic tangents usually about motocross and stuff. So yeah. we'll, we'll nip that one in the bud right there because people will be probably li- <laughs> listening to this going, do not talk about motocross again for God's sake. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I mean, I'd like, to, I'd like to talk about motocross, but okay. Let's, yeah, let's we do can it. Avoid- Talk moto. It's fine with me, man. It's fine with me. I don't know. How old are you? Uh, I'm 20. No, I'm not. I'm 30. Jesus. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I guess. I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, I used to follow. My dad used to follow a lot of motocross back in the 70s. Went to kind of lots of GPs. And the, but yeah, I think one of the first ones was back in 1974 when <laughs> when two two Russians came to Hawkstone Park and they rode KTM's and. Um, yeah, it was pretty mental, really. really. And then through the kind of Roger de Costa era, when um, down at Farley Castle. Do you know Farley Castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Farley Castle a few so times. Yeah, you know, young gun. Yeah, those are the days when you know when I, and I kind of when I worked motocross. I turned up in a in a transit van with a tent and uh, <laughs> eating bacon sandwiches for lunch. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe there's no change now, but uh, yeah, I used to I used to love what what gun and motocross. Awesome, Great. awesome. I think yeah. a lot of people who are into downhill too have got like a moto history. Um, you know, it's definitely a good a good transfer of skills too to to like people who have got it, got into mountain biking from downhill. I mean, Gwyn's a good example, I guess. Um, yeah, Gwyn, Gwyn, Menard. I mean, they're yeah. you know, they're incredible more cross riders. Yeah, there's it, a good transfer uh, of skills. But obviously, I grew up in sort of like the well, I guess the Jeremy McGrath era. So um, right. yeah, guy's my hero. Like, li- yeah, I mean, I can't even say enough positive words about that guy. And I was really lucky to meet him. Not well, I say not that long ago, about. Two, eight or nine years ago um i lived in california for a little while and the guy oh, shit, i'm sorry to hear about that yeah it was terrible mate i don't know how i got through it um <laughs> the guy, where, where did you live uh in paris so a bit of a shithole but uh a place called mx heaven so it was basically a holiday destination for uk guys and swedes and stuff like that um so people would come over and i'd look after them basically i'd take them out riding i'd take them out for dinner in the evenings but a guy called Stefan Elvin used to own that place, um, who was right. really good friends with Jeremy McGrath. And yeah, it's pretty surreal one night when he said, oh, I'm going to Jeremy's for dinner. Do you want to come? Yeah. And I was like, of course I want to come. Like, Jesus Christ, probably going to be the best, the best thing yeah. in my life, this. Um, but yeah, spent a lot of time over there. You know, yeah, I, got invite, I got invited out by uh, some, some people in LA about a month ago. They were my two aunties who moved to LA when they were three, and then okay. uh, now they're now ninety five, ninety seven, and they're still driving. Oh, really? And they took me out. They took me out for dinner. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it must be an American thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they drove me. Pretty really? Bonkers. Yeah. Jesus, that Na- must be scary. Ninety seven, still driving. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, I spent a lot of time there as a young lad, like, and then always just been around. I guess motorsport in general, whether it's been motocross or speedway. Um, I used to be a mechanic for a speedway rider or two, uh, and my cousin used to ride professional speedway as well. So I was always helping him out. So always kind of yeah. been around motorsport, and then. Um, but you really can go off on a tangent, can you? Yeah, man, I'm terrible for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll chat motor all evening. You've got to shut me up. Uh, okay. <laughs> I think the main question. Um, which most people who listen to this will probably want to know is obviously about Dirt Magazine and, it, and its transfer from, from print to, to digital. Right. Can you elaborate on that a little more as to why the decision was made um, and, you know, the journey since doing that, really? I mean, it was a little over about two years ago, would you say? Is it end of March? Yeah, it was yeah. two years ago. I mean, I can't, I, can't, uh, I can't actually go into the detail with you, but... Um, okay. 
uh, I think Dirt was doing pretty well as, as a magazine, and um, but they decided the company who owned it at the time decided to take take that course. Um, mm. Yeah, I, don't, I probably don't want to really go. I mean, maybe in hindsight, we should have kept going with maybe six issues a year, okay. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, since since then we have done an, an issue, and you know, it's quite likely we will be doing an issue or two a year in the future. But um, yeah, the transition was. It's, it requires different skills, so. Um, you know, I, I was seeing like you know we were selling X amount of magazines, not not so many magazines, and then you'd put like a, you know, you'd put a, a bike test up, and it would get like an insane amount of views. I was yeah. thinking, wow, I mean, and you can you know you can elaborate on a bike test, you can have words, images, video, and I, you know, for me, it was like I'd already kind of made made the switch mentally, right? Um, and and since then, it's just been about it's just been about learning basically, which which I think everybody who is in the same business as doing. Uh, it's just working out different ways to do things. So, uh, you know, kind of what ultimately what we're trying to do is to kind of replicate what the magazine was kind of online. So, and there's, and I think there's great potential to do different things with it. And you can actually you know, think what's well, cool. I mean, you know, the magazine was, I think, I think it was a good product, which, which, you know, Mike and myself and all the contributors did over those years. But, um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I it's I, I like kind of watching the video and you can you know you can see in people's eyes and stuff like that. I think it's uh, I think yeah, I think it's a good thing to be honest. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a strange time. I mean, it must be really weird for you because you've sort of seen the whole, you know, the the growth of the magazine. And yeah, I wouldn't say not. I don't mean the demise of the magazine, but the whole yeah. industry just flip on its head. It's a really strange time, you know. Obviously, we speak to a lot of brands day in and day out about, you know, where where are they putting the money as far as marketing goes? Because print's tough. Yeah. Uh, online is really good, but sometimes doesn't last that long. Yeah, you know, yeah. It can be on and off. You know, Dirt's front page or whoever's front page within a day or two. <laughs> um, and then you've got yeah. the social media side of things, which is also, yeah, just an absolute whirlwind of information and probably a bit of an abundance as well of it there's like just so much content yeah, yeah um, it's pretty crazy so uh yeah you know it's about kind of it's about getting it's about getting the stories isn't it and it is, uh, yeah. yeah you know you know in, in the last month um you know i kind of got like two stories stand out in the last month kind of rode the prototype 29 track okay. and also got a story on the intents and like you know there's nobody else got the stories because well, it's just because the mindset is people people expect it on the plate, so uh, yeah. it's not like that. And I think I think doing the magazine teaches you good skills and uh, and good routines, which um, maybe the internet doesn't teach you. So true. Yeah, it's good. I think I think the magazine was was a really good a really good grounding yeah. um, for what I do now, basically. So are your days sort of spent? Is it like a constant hustle then to get content out of out of people? You know, like let's say the new twenty nine er the trek yeah is it you that's like trying to get stories from them and or or do those guys still come uh, to you quite easily like oh come and do this uh i better be careful i better be careful <laughs> <laughs> uh, i i can i can actually go somewhere um i went to a i went to a brand at, uh, at the end of the last year and they wanted me to do a story on i think it was on technology right and uh when i got there what i saw meant that I told them, look, guys, I'm not, I'm not actually doing that story, and they were like, what? I said, look, I'm doing this story instead. So you've actually got to, you've actually got to play what's in front of you rather than go in with a, with a kind of rigid structure sometimes. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's what's good about it. You can have, you, you make it up as you go along. I think. Yeah, sometimes it's the best way, as we all know. But, but <laughs> there is. But having said that, we do have a, uh, you know, there is a plan of, you know, what's coming up in terms of like bike tests, events, yeah. interviews, stuff like that. So, yeah. I think I, what's I, cool I, as well is some brands do it so well. I mean, I always use Santa Cruz as a, as a good example. You know, the new Nomad's just been released um, mm -hmm. and they managed to keep it totally under, under wraps from the general public yeah. until like go time. And I think that's so cool. And like, that's why I love social media. 
um, yeah. is because it's like, boom, you, you know, your Instagram feed is just filled with it all at the same time, total blanket, super yeah. clever marketing. Um, yeah. I think I think Santa Cruz are very good at that. I yeah. think uh, I think you could take a hat off to what they did in Lords. Yes. Um, by you know they kind of you know they got together that twenty nine inch downhill bike in six months, and I think they actually, I mean you know Trek had been working on a on a twenty nine inch bike for many years, but I think they kind of they probably did Trek a favour by by bringing that bike to Lords. It kind of it probably made the trek more acceptable in the public eye, I think. So, yeah, yeah, yeah because did, Santa, right. Santa, Santa Cruz has got that image. So, um, yeah, I think uh, fair use them on that. Mm, I think it's obviously spurred a lot of brands on to quickly put together a 29er race bike, like, <laughs> within two weeks or whatever it was. Yeah, there's, there's been a bit of a... I mean, I think the lesson learned from the last two months is that... Uh, you know, as as much as you know, there's so many angles to this story. Uh, we we could spend hours talking yeah. about it, but ultimately, the brands were caught napping. So, as much bad feeling there is out there, it, it would have been good if if more more of the top ten, top twenty would have had that machinery. So they wouldn't have been this kind of bad feeling. But um, you know, it makes makes a good story, doesn't it? Mate, it makes a really good story, and I think it made an even better story that the first round was how it was because obviously. 29 has all went super fast in qualifying, but then no one ever really got to see what they're about come race day. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, you know, Fort Williams kind of played out perfectly. Like you probably couldn't have written a better script than having Greg win on a 29er, you yeah. know, 20th World Cup win, um, seventh, seventh at Fort William, I think. Um, yeah. So yeah, you probably couldn't have written a better script. And then you've got all the other brands underneath trying to get a 29er running um, and then some riders obviously really against it too you know like Loic who seems to be totally not keen um, yeah yeah uh, it seems to be that way but uh, yes, you know, you've got to be open minded I mean there's, lot, there's lots of kind of subplots to it I mean I, I was speaking I've got a story going out tomorrow and one of the one of the people commenting says that it's going to be totally unfair to shorter riders but I don't know. The thing is, you you can say you can make a generalization about twenty nine pairs, but ultimately, it's about the bike, not the wheel size. If you if you go twenty nine wheels and, and really shit geometry, then you're fucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's you can't make that generalization. But um, you know. But having said that, um, you know, you could argue that Minar, like I haven't, I remember a big big argument with Manar five years ago about bike size and he was adamant that um, he was adamant that the way he was doing it with a long stem and a high bar was was the way to do it even though he was like right. undersized on his bike and you could argue that Manar has been at a disadvantage for a good part of his career so you know you could I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Manar taking the, the World Cup Series this year really not at all, because I mean, you can you can never you can't underestimate how how much fatigue comes into the equation when um, when you ride a bike is too small for you, especially on kind of three to four minute tracks. You can all of us can ride bikes that are too small for us over kind of one and a half two minutes, but yeah. when you get a when you get a beat in over that time, then you've got to the, the fit has got to be right. Mm. And obviously, he's definitely got experience on his side. Um, yeah. Could, hopefully it's going to be a really interesting season it looks to be playing out really well um, yeah. if you've not I listened think... as well Loic made, went on an epic rant when he did this podcast it was so funny about 29ers <laughs> like... I, I, didn't actually, I didn't actually listen to that one. oh it's what, funny what, what, goes, was, what, what was the essence of the rant uh, how, uh, pretty much how he hates them they're a waste of time uh, but he did call out he said the only people that will be fast on a 29er is Greg Minard he said that like it was really weird how he said that, and I'm going back like six months as well. Um, right. But yeah, obviously no one saw the Santa Cruz been unveiled at Lords, I guess. Yeah, I, I did. I, I just, I just, I just, I'd recommend that he maybe revisits his mindset. Yeah, on I think that so. One. I think he's called it out so much though that he's probably <laughs> he just can't go back on it. I mean, I'm not saying anyone yeah. you know listen to this podcast and is pointing the finger at Loic saying you said on that podcast yeah. <laughs> but I think you said well, it in a few places well too, the yeah. thing is I mean you know I mean the, the whole industry has been 10 years behind on the whole 29 thing I mean we you know we did 29 testing back in 2010 mm-hmm. and 
I mean, how the, how the fuck has it taken so long for the industry to catch up? It's just ludicrous, basically. Yeah. But, you know, and what it means is, I mean, you know, I, when I've ridden 29-inch downhill bikes, they scared the shit at me because I'm thinking the potential for those bikes is just insane. Um, you can, you, you know, be able to go through bigger root gardens, bigger rock sections at higher speeds. I mean, how is that kind of, how is that lame? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, that shows, like, total lack of... Well, that's knowledge it. of like, riding a spike. So. It's just progressing the sport, if anything, surely. Um, I, I, I think it is personally, but um, yeah, I mean. I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm kind of torn. Um, Interesting. Yeah. No, I, th- I think it is going to progress the sport, but I also kind of love to, I don't know. I mean, you look at, I mean, Gwyn was four seconds up, I think, before he crashed. So it's not like yeah. they're super fast. I think a lot of it is still going to come down to well, like, the ride. Well, that, that can, that can that comes down to how how good was Gwyn on the day and how yeah. maybe maybe Manar hasn't quite got used to that bike yet. I mean, That's also true. Yeah, you could, you, I mean, there's so many variables. It could come down to wind speed. It could come down to tire pressure. It could come down to how you're feeling on the day. Mm. It's like, you know what? If you, yeah, it's just uh, it's so many so many angles to it. But um, mm. it, I think it would be good when I think it'd be good if. You know, Gwyn, Bruni, Brosnan, they all were on the same wheel size, so then you could, okay, that's the kind of, let, you can see where you are then. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and like Danny Hart, I mean, has Danny, Danny, Danny's had like, I mean, three or four weeks to get used to that bike. I mean, uh-huh. when we started riding 29s, it took, it took us like, it took us months and months to get used to the different tempo of a 29 inch wheel bike. So, well, it's like if anyone just jumps on somebody else's bike, it takes ages to even feel at home on it, isn't it? It's like, yeah, mm. it can take, yeah, many rides before you think, oh, actually, I'm starting to like this thing or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. Imagine doing that, oh, you've been the fastest in the world. <laughs> so, you're in, so you're in the middle of it all, yeah? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I'm kind of torn on the whole thing. Um, I'm all for progression of the sport. I'm all for the guys going as fast as they can all the time. Yeah. Yeah. God, I don't know. I think I, I think, think I think the bit I think the biggest story here is not wheel size. I think the biggest story is about the biggest story is about uh, track technicality. Uh, there does seem to be a move towards kind of faster, more open tracks. And I think for me, watching Fort William in the weekend, the highlight was was the root and mud section because, like, it was like every, you're holding your breath, thinking, "Are they going to make it? Are they not going to make it?" And I mean, you think of the great races over the over the years, and you know, Val de Sol when in two thousand eight when Sam Hill was going down through those routes, it was it's pretty epic, really. So, mm. I think if the tracks were more technical, people wouldn't be bitching about wheel size so much. So, I think that's the story, not wheel size. I'm going to agree with you totally on that, and I think <laughs> no, I am because that is the thing. You know, you've got a lot of riders complaining that you know some tracks are going a bit bike parky and stuff. Mm. Uh, but then you've got. I, I just find it a bit. I just find it a bit boring, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. So coming into Leo Gang, you're not too stoked. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, there's there's, I, there's all this element of surprise, isn't it? I mean, you know, you know, Gwyn going down there of no chain. So mm. Uh, mm. so yeah, which which makes you think, okay, well, if you don't need a chain, then you can make the track as fucking steep as you want. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think. I think uh, I think Dan was a bit stuck in his ways with some of the tracks, but um, I, you understand that you know you haven't got a million organisers wanting to put on a super technical event. So, uh, but it would, I think it would be nice to see. I mean, I think if you look back to Champery in oh seven, was it oh seven? Yeah, it was right. Champery. Basically, Champery, the first ever Champery World Cup race is when Vulios came back. Yeah. And Sam Hill put 17 seconds on everyone in the qualifying round. I mean, and that's when that's when that's when Champry didn't have any catch burns. It was like I have never ever seen so many amazing riders in the in the fucking catch net. In it was right. bomb. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, well, I, I, is, uh, I'd like to see more of that. <laughs> sorry, I met with Bowman today. Uh, obviously, we we both know quite well. Um, Scott uh, or Mark? Uh, no, sorry, Joe. Joe Bowman. Oh, Joe, right? So yeah, Joe. yeah, yeah. And, he, and I said, you know, we were doing this tonight, and he goes, he is an absolute library of information. And as go, I said to Joe, I was like, well, that's pretty shit, because I'm really not. <laughs> and then when you're banging out years and tracks, it's, like, super impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I always wow. kind of joke on this that, like, my 
my sort of like race knowledge is pretty limited. I'm I'm definitely a, a victim of like is it Dunbar's number? You can only remember so many things. <laughs> right, okay. So But um but no, uh, yeah. Sorry to go off on a off no, there, it's but, awesome. It's really uh, good. Technical technical tracks uh, they're exciting exciting days I, I agree that's what it should be it, and uh, it's weird to watch that so many people have been so torn on like social media and stuff and riders have been saying that it wasn't fair to have the the wood section in and it should have been changed but, but to yeah. be honest yeah, it, didn't, it didn't actually look that difficult to be honest but then you know I, just, <laughs> I it, it didn't I mean it, it didn't look that difficult <laughs> <laughs> but obviously I didn't go up and see either because although I was at the event I never actually made it yeah. up the hill that far um, but you mean I think I, yeah I, I think, think the funniest thing from the weekend was uh, when Warner was commentating and said oh uh, the camera's gone down because the, the cameramen have I had enough of the midges so it's like, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious the midges were brutal on Sunday up there yeah. oh it's terrible but it usually isn't it, let's be honest. It's just one of those spots. But uh, it's weird, though, that some riders were so torn on it. It's crazy. Like Some were like saying it should have been taken out. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it's the same track for everyone. Just, you know, whatever. Get on with it. Let's get on with it. Get, get on with it. And, and by the way, Steve Jones from Dirt reckons it don't look that hard. <laughs> um, yeah, but I guess I kind of brought up in dirty, stinking, uh, rooty... <laughs> yeah. Gnar land. Yeah, but, I don't know. I mean, if it is that bad, do you think riders should be able to club together and have the organisers make changes or not? Good question. Uh, let me just think about that a minute. Yeah, um, no worries. Well, uh, oh God, don't don't <laughs> ask me that question. It stresses me out. I see. You know, I went to I went to um, Shumpery the following year and. There was guys cutting roots out of the hill. I uh, was thinking, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, why do we make these amazing bikes? What, so you're going to make it a... Uh, it, you're going to get me on one here. Because I, I see I see, what we're bringing up a generation of, of riders who know how to ride bike parks and jumps and stuff like that. But you get them into dirty off-camber rooted sections and they're like, they just don't know how to deal with it. And it's mm. like... You know, that's the kind of that's. I think that's for me. It's the essence of the sport. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's maybe not anymore. But um, mm. no. Again, I, I, I. The reason I brought that up is because I saw something on social media. Um, I do try and avoid social media as much as possible. But it was actually a speedway rider. They turned up at an event on Sunday night, and the track was awful. But the thing is with Speedway, you've got seven guys or whatever it is in a team, and they literally all just said, we're not riding unless you sort that out. Now, yeah. obviously the organisers have got people in the stands, they've got paying, paying you know, fans, and they had to make a change. But I guess with mountain biking, you know, I don't, is there a riders' union or not? I don't even know. Uh, you know, I mean, so it's like, like who do you go things, to? <laughs> things would have to be very extreme. I mean, uh, yeah. Weird, strange, oh, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. No, me either. Uh, I did. I did actually have an email from David Vasquez, who was the the UCI delegate last night. And okay. the thing is, I don't actually know how to open that email while I'm. And it's a very long email. So. That, okay. <laughs> but he can defend. He defends, uh, and I, I agree with him that you know it's kind of they just you should you should just run it anyway. It, I don't know. Let's yeah. change the subject. Yeah, definitely. Let's do that right away. Right, watch this. Um, <laughs> I wanted to get your thoughts on, right, how am I going to word this? So you've, we've seen like the industry kind of change as far as print and digital goes, but what are your thoughts on riders who make a change from, you know, racing and head more towards the sort of like brand ambassador kind of thing you know we can use like bryceland for example for as a good example sorry so you know top down Bryce, rider bryceland yeah um it's interesting who's i speaking to um i speak to some of the spanish uh riders and media and they they thought it was a a very negative thing for the sport for bryceland to leave downhill um okay i think it's i think he's very missed bryceland um but but you know what? You can you do what you want. Kind of doesn't really matter. But um, yeah. Uh, but what do I think of 
people changing their direction, did you say? I think, yeah, it's, it's changing the direction, but also being able to make probably quite a comfortable living, like not racing or anything, just being able to film edits, you know, that, that they, they are sort of part of that social media almost generation where they can, you know, get paid just to deliver content. I mean, probably has always been around, but it seems really... Uh, but it's, it's, it's an easier option, isn't it? But yeah. uh <laughs> Probably a more fun option too. Let's be honest. <laughs> it, it might be. You know, yeah. ra- race racing's intense, and uh, but you know, I don't know. It's up to the individual. I mean, I, you know, I, I went back racing last year, and I absolutely loved mm. the buzz of having to put a run down against the clock. And you know, even though I do it kind of many times a week when I'm testing bikes, when you're actually in a race situation, I think uh, I think the adrenaline of that is second to none. So. I think those riders will probably miss that, and um, but well, up to them, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm kind of, I'm not, I'm not going to kind of, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to any particular opinion, to be honest. <laughs> I <laughs> think it's just so, super interesting sorry. that the people are starting to do that. I think it's, I, I personally, I'm a bit of a fan of it. Like, I'm quite happy to sit and watch a good little ride and edit and whatnot. Um, yeah, but yeah, you get, I mean, you, you, can, you cannot appreciate the riding skill. That, that's that, yeah. that's undoubted. Yeah. Mm. Mm, for sure, but um, I I think I think downhill racing is is the, is it will always be above that. Yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, it's always going to be the pinnacle of our sport, I guess. Um, I, it, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, D- like, just because of all the elements that are involved in it. Mm. So what? many elements of all, you know, kind of you know, you got to work out the kind of flow of a track. You've got to deal with the conditions. You got to work your bike out. You got to deal with your mindset. I mean. Is it, there's so much there's so much in it. I think um, it, it it's a shame, but yeah, so yeah. Be it. I've always been a massive fan of of anyone who can race downhill. You know, again, coming from a motocross background, where you have two or three motos in one day to you know you can motocross across tangent, Davy. No, I'm not going on it. I'm just saying, I'm <laughs> just making a point <laughs> that being able to put one run down is pretty tough. And I, whenever I race yeah. downhill, because I've done a fair amount of them in my time, I always struggled like yeah. hell. I was like, oh, I'll yeah. just do a, do a better one next time. And then you're like, oh shit, <laughs> that was yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so. you know what? You cannot. You know, when we did the the worlds in um, Val de Sol last year, we went out. There was there was a group of us. There was six of us, and the banter is just like amazing. It's yeah. kind of can't beat that. You know, mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, where do you think the bike industry is at, like right now? Do you think it's in a good place? Uh, it seems to be. Um, uh, there's, there's a lot. I think within the industry, there's a lot of talk of. Oh wow! There's a there's a green wood pack here just outside my house. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I think there seems to be the talk in the industry at the minute is a lot of golfers turning to mountain biking. Yes, <laughs> and then we were in the Alps last week. Again, oh, we we look at the ridiculous clothes golfers wear, but I mean, mountain bikers wear ridiculous clothes as well. Um, <laughs> Especially if they're cheap so, and nasty, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I can see uh, e-biking. That's where it's. That's what's happening. Yep, yep. Um, obviously, okay. e-bike is something we could probably talk about for hours, but yeah, let's do it. It's great. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, like most things, I was very torn. Uh, and still, I'm quite torn on it. I Which ones have you ridden? I've ridden, oh God, I've ridden a Levo. Right. That's pretty much it. Okay, yeah, you need to get, yeah, the Levo's a good bike. Uh, yeah. I better be careful what I say. I can't, I can't see the Levo being the last specialised e bike, if you okay. know what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand. I got you. I got you. You can see, you can see where the Levo's going to turn to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, I don't know, man. Sometimes working in the bike industry, you don't get to ride as often as what you'd like to. Let's put it that way. Um, so, been able to just grab an e-bike from somewhere, I've not really found a chance to do it really. So, that's really the been the only ultimately, one I've ridden. Yeah. But maybe need to ultimately, do it more. Ultimately, it's the rider decides how much effort is involved. Still, so and I think that's the that's the. There's a lot of misinformation out there at the minute. So um, that's what I found. Yeah. Though. Because yeah. it's a tiny bit, I wouldn't say easier, but your cadence is higher. You still get equally as tired. No, I, I can. We, okay, we got a we got a loop round here. Okay, which yeah. is which is six climbs, six descents, and I've timed it on my on my normal bike. It takes two hours. My heart rate's one thirty five average, maximum's like one seventy or something like that. Mm-hmm. I could do it on e bike. Uh, my average heart rate is one forty. My maximum's one seventy five. So it's 
a more intensive ride and it takes 50 minutes. So that is almost a win-win. <laughs> completely. <laughs> completely. The thing is, what, what people, you, you know, I hit the wall when I ride an e-bike because I just go, you just go mental for two hours. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. And you know what? You can have, what people forget is that your heart rate going down a hill is super high and uh, you get you get an all body workout and um do you know what i've taken world cup riders out on e-bikes and every single one of them have loved it so okay uh, it's, so it's you're an it's advocate happy. uh i just i'm an advocate for just <laughs> having I, I just love going downhill on the on them and uh this i think once you get to the once you get into the rhythm of the heavier bikes it's just amazing mm. All right, let's go for an e-bike ride soon. You can convert me. Yeah, anytime, <laughs> anytime you want. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm still I'm, right now at this very moment. I'm torn. I'm a bit of a traditional traditionalist, but you can't yeah. really be a traditionalist in this sport because it's changing all the time and there's constantly new stuff. So it's really difficult. If I guess if I was a real uh, traditionalist, I'd be on a on a rigid pace Dave, or something. So, <laughs> Davy, get your ass down here. I'll take you on a bike ride and. Uh, see what you think after that. All right. Well, yeah. Okay. We'll go through the <laughs> podcast channels and we'll do an update later on. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be a laugh. That'd be a laugh. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, That's all right. Leah gang predictions really quick. And then we'll move on to some listener questions. Uh, Leah gang. Uh, I, I can see, I can see Greg taking that one again. Yeah. Uh, although I can see Gwyn being pretty furious. Yeah, I think so too. Yep. Um, yeah. And in the women's, do you have any uh, inside knowledge on Rachel's condition or not? I don't actually know because I've no. been, uh, I haven't been around to get any. I've, I've been off the internet for a little bit this week. So um, right. I'd like to see, I, I, you know, Tani, Tracy, uh, Manon. Yeah, I'd love, yeah, I'd love to see that tight battle again. It's great. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I think from what I saw yeah. online, like. She, it was a dislocated shoulder, and chances are she'll probably be all right for Leah Gang. But right, I, guess, okay. I guess time will tell. You know, it's one of those. Well, isn't she's it? tough. She's pretty tough. I hope she does. Can I come back quick, quickly? Yeah, for sure. And, she, uh, she's a tough yeah. chick, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's been some surprises already this season, so it's pretty hard. To well, make well done, prediction. well done, Charlie Hatton, by the way. Yeah, huge. Well done, Charlie Hatton. Yeah. <laughs> well, Charlie Hatton from Forest Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, huge, huge. Is that where you're based? Then are you are you over that way? Yeah, Forest Dean. Yeah. Uh, okay. Nice part of the world, yeah. mate. Very nice part of the world. Um, okay, let's do some listener questions, if that's all right. Oh, shit. Dude, it's all right. It's all good. There was no crazy ones. Um, the yeah. Ed Masters episode was, yeah, there was some pretty wild ones came in for that. But yours are pretty tame, I think, to be honest. Okay, that's good. I think there must, be some in, there must be some inside knowledge ones because <laughs> there's some strange ones. Um, okay. But let's, uh, let's bash through some of these. Let me just open up this on my phone. So... These listener questions are once again supported by Saks Underwear and their patented ballpark pouch. Hence why we call listener questions the ballpark question. And this this week, uh, at you crake me up on Instagram is our winner. So get in touch because we owe you some undies. Let's crack on. We got first question at tree hugger Graham. Um, right. How do you make a flaming sambuca? I don't eat dr- drink sambuca to be honest. I so wouldn't know. Okay, I just wondered if that was an insider one. No, there's no, no, there's no funny story behind it. <laughs> uh, last time I flipped in sambuca was with uh, Petey in that bar in Leger called the. Uh, oh, I don't know. I think there was and there was like hundreds of them lined up on the bar. Okay. <laughs> I, can't remember, I can't. I can't remember the name of it. But so obviously, ba- obviously, obviously, he was there. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Graham, you know you know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Uh, at Ed Davis twenty seven, is he still building yeah. fences? Built me one a few years ago, and it's still solid. Thumbs up emoji. That's, oh, that, that that's very kind of him. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, before that, I used to I used to be a I used to be a stock fencer. I used to be a professional hole digger. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a tough job. Yeah, I've done lots of I've done lots of jobs. <laughs> That's a tough job. That is a very tough job. I've done a bit of that myself, and uh, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. more excited to be working in the bike industry. That's for sure. <laughs> um, uh, da, 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 da. At Hayden Davies, seventy four. Um, how is the future looking for dirt without the printed magazine? 
And can Steve outdrink PE? Uh, on the latter question, there's not. That's not a question. Uh, <laughs> on the former question, we will be making a, another magazine this year, so um, I'll give you guys information about that. Okay. Uh, very soon. Excellent. All right. Couple. There's a couple in this one. Uh, at Joyo opposite. Um, first up, he wants to say he's a huge Dirt and Steve Jones fan. It's always nice to hear, isn't it? Um, Good time. <laughs> Who is who is slash are your journalistic inspirations? Uh, pretty much uh, all sports journalists because uh, they they live in the real world and you know they if it's a rugby match uh, you know I watch a lot of rugby that's my that's what I do to switch off um, you know they can they they watch a game and they've got a they've got a they've got a file out within half an hour of the match and uh, I've got a huge respect for those people that do that that's yeah. that's proper journalism. Mm-hmm. Very um, good. Yeah, so that's the answer to that one. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right. Uh, at you, crake me up. God. Um, how much hype is in bike reviews? Um, that's a that's a pretty good question in a strange. Yeah, it's a, re- it's a it's a really good question actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so there there shouldn't be any hype in bike reviews whatsoever. Um, but having said that, I think if you do. If there is a bike which is pretty standout, I think it's okay to get excited about it. Um, I think most of the hype is in in the brand marketing. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, you know, I get asked that question loads of times, and I also, also get asked the question that um, you know people say, "Oh, there's no bad bikes these days," which is absolute bollocks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, the thing is, you, you know. You, you, you can get to things like suspension setup. I I don't even need to get that far sometimes because mm. brands are fucked up with geometry or you know frame hits the seat tube or shit like that. I mean, there's always something. I I don't think I've ever come across a bike that's ten out of ten. So yeah, um, um, yeah, I, yeah. Go on. I just want to quickly give you my take on this as well because yeah, um, right. Let me try and think how to explain. As long as long as you don't go into motocross, it's fine. <laughs> so, so when I was in the motocross, no, um, I was relatively, uh, God, what's the word? A latecomer to the mountain bike industry. Um, I'm yeah. not going to mention the word, but I did work in another industry before. Yeah. So, right. I came into the mountain bike industry, and you know, I remember first going to um, to MBUK, for example. Yeah, um, I've never been to see you. Obviously, Ollie does that for us uh, in our office. So, yeah. went to MBUK with Ollie, uh, showed him a bunch of product. You know, we went through some, you know, some joystick stuff or whatever. Yeah. Came away. Good kit. Good really kit. good. Thank you very much, man. Much appreciated. Um, came away from that. Um, you know, a few months later or a month later, stuff goes into the magazine. Um, you know, and you're out on the road the next day or whatever, and you say to one of the dealers, "Oh, you know, oh, MBUK just you know gave this bar a four and a half out of five, for example." Yeah. And a lot of dealers would turn their nose up and laugh. And you're like, you know, what? And it's like, well, how much did you pay for that then? And, you know, because I'd, I'd been and I'd seen the whole process, I was like, seriously, like, there is none of that goes on. You know, I know from going there that the uh, marketing stuff is on another level altogether. They're not even in contact with each other. But there's mm-hmm. a there's a there's an underlying, I don't know. What's so the you're word? right, you see- I mean, this yeah, this may be something we should have talked about in depth because there there does seem to be an idea from some people that it's you know it's all linked to you know or that that bikes only in there because they buy an advert, yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, that's this that's total nonsense. I mean, it's like you know, like the Dirt One Hundred is, you know, last year I rode over a hundred bikes, okay. and you know, the kind of Dirt One Hundred is is the best bikes we've ridden. Simple as that, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, kind of, there's there's no kind of external influence whatsoever. I mean, you know, also people say to me, "Oh God, you know, that you this, this it's always the next best thing." Well, I, well, I'm thinking, well, yeah, why wouldn't it be? Because like, I'm always looking for the best bikes. I mean, yeah. it's like so if someone was like being a crit- a restaurant critic or something like that. I mean, there's always there's always another restaurant which is great. So, but you know, the, my my aim is to find the best bikes. As simple as that. Yeah. And. Um, it's weird though, is that yeah. perception, isn't there? Like even between you know bike shops, and you think, well, surely you guys would probably know. Yeah, 
<laughs> you know, like it's yeah. weird. it's a strange one that you know. It, I mean, it genuinely People doesn't think, happen. Um, uh, I, I will say, to to be honest, it does happen. <laughs> okay, right, you turn. <laughs> uh, no, it does. It I, I have seen it happen. Maybe right. maybe not in the UK, but I, uh, it definitely happens in in other places in Europe. Okay. Um, but so it, yeah, so the got to the person who sent that. There, you know, there is. Of the I see is your question. So yeah. I think there might be an element of truth in it, but um, hmm. but as soon as you go down that road, I mean, you can have integrity as fucked, isn't it? So yeah, definitely, definitely, and that's it. You got to you got to remain integral. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then you get you know you can get a little shit. I mean, you know, I, one of the best bikes I rode last year was a um, 150 mil steel single pivot, which was built in Bristol, and um, and I got a load of shit about it, and I said, "Well, look, the, you know, I, I couldn't believe it when I rode it. You know, it was the best feeling bike. It was, it's a Starling, and you know, it was, um, right. it, it, yeah. it posted, it posted the, the fastest time. So it's undeniable. It's, it's the kind of that was that was the best bike we rode. So yeah, it's an interesting subject. It is. It's really straight. It is. It is interesting. And uh, again, I was happy to go and see all that process as well, and come away thinking, yeah, that. It, it is what it is. People genuinely review products who have no real benefit from giving it a good or a bad review. You know, um, yeah, I can say I can say most of the UK journalists have, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're good guys and kind of, yeah. you know, they know they know what they're doing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that's good. Yeah. Managed to put that one to bed. I like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, we've got another one from At Tree Hugger Graham as well. Um, what's the strangest place you've ever woken up? England. <laughs> it is right now <laughs> yeah god oh, if you don't want to go into god. motocross we're definitely not going into politics that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> oh dear no, yeah I can I, oh there's endless, uh, yeah I, let's not go into that one okay. no my wife my wife will walk through the door and what the fuck <laughs> you on Skype too um, uh, we got uh, actually a question from from Harrow Harrow Bikes um, right. What happened to Jerry Dyer? Well, Jerry, um, so he was working on Lancaster. I mean, he's what a character. He, I was meant to meet him last year. He was meant to come to the local pub here, but he never turned up. Uh, last I heard of uh, Jerry, he'd been working on Lancaster bomber planes. Okay, so, so who, is, who is Jerry then, just quickly? Oh, who's Jerry Dyer? Jerry Dyer was the uh, Jerry Dyer was one of the first editors of Dirt back oh, in okay. 96, 97. What, you mean you don't know who Jerry Dyer is, Davey? No, I'm sorry, man, no. No, enlighten me. I'm interested. Yeah, Jerry was a hell of a character. Um, he he was the editor of Dirt for many years, and he went off to California with some. I think he actually was, was there was some kind of ransom motocross magazine. Uh oh. Then he some reality shows and some some shit went down. I can't remember what, but uh, he shows up again a few years ago. He was racing down the last year and. Uh, yeah, he's working on Lancaster Plains, but I think he's running a, a a window blind company in London now. So that's the answer to that question. Brilliant. There you go, Harrow Bikes. Now you know. Yeah. And I learned something too. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm unashamed of this sort of stuff now. It's, it seems to come and bat me in the ass every now and again, but hey-ho. <laughs> um, right, last one before we uh, move on. Um, yeah. Jim Buchanan, who is uh, obviously Pin TV. Oh. Jim Buchanan's asked a question. He has. He's asked two, actually. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, can I, I'll ask you one of them, because I just didn't think it was relevant, but um, have you still got chickens that come in the kitchen? Oh, I hate chickens, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, so the second one. That's actually the last time I did an interview. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was with Jim back in, uh, back in 90... I was with Jim back in 98. That was when, when we set up a team... Uh, there was well, it was it was Mojo UK and it was the Intense UK team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pagey, myself, Ali King, Nibs, Keller. Um, that was yeah, right. And um, yeah, that was and Jim came down and yeah, no no hands anymore, Jim. <laughs> Good dude, Jim uh, as well. Looking, looking forward to seeing you, Jim as well. Can you come in there? Yeah, for sure. Is uh, I've caught up with those guys on Saturday and Sunday. Um, yeah, yeah. As usual, Stuart had a skinful. It was a good laugh. Um, yeah love what those guys are doing too it's, it's pretty yeah. cool um, the second question Jim asked which is a bit of a yeah. mouthful for me is 
if there were as many compounds slash slash and oh god you see i told you it's a mouthful <laughs> if there were as many compounds slash sidewall support types of 650 plus tires as 29ers would he still be totally sold on 29ers for racing slash riding uh, uh the answer to that is Jim, we haven't caught up recently, so you don't know where I'm at. No, I think you answered that quite, <laughs> yeah, quite well before. <laughs> uh, but thanks anyway, Jim. Really appreciate you sending me a question. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jim, give us a call and uh, we'll discuss it at, in length, at length. Awesome. Yeah, it's a big, big, big subject, that, actually. Um, one of the best tyres I've ridden this year is, uh, is a Minion DHR 2.8 on, on an e-bike, and... Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. Awesome. Cool. Very good. Right. That's listening to questions out of the way. The last thing we need to do um, is what I did before. I don't know if you listened to the Ed Masters one. Um, yeah. Is There's like a Chinese whisper question, but obviously I wouldn't want to ask you the one that Ed Masters put to you because it's probably not fair. Um, there's, there's a what? Chinese? Yeah, it's like, so basically what, what, we, what I started was uh, Kathy Sessler was first. So she set a question for the next guest obviously she didn't know she didn't know who the next guest was going to be um and right. then i then i've carried it on so there's always been a question for the next person so you don't you, 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 you mean ask a question yeah i want you to ask one but i'd also want you to answer the one which ed masters set for you that's fine it's not uh, because the question he asked was terrible and i'd never do it to you because of your position in the industry um because <laughs> <laughs> it just wouldn't go down well at all so <laughs> I'm not going to ask you that question. I'm going to set my own one, if that's all right. You shouldn't have brought it up then. Uh, no, we've got to do it. It's a, it's a feature. It's a new feature. I need to bring it up, but I didn't want to ask you well, that well, one. The thing is, it's obviously, it's obviously on air somewhere, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you can listen to it. It was. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's no problem. It was. You've got to go what? to uh, fuck, marry, or kill the women's top ten, which... <laughs> <laughs> I figured if I asked you that, you probably wouldn't want wow, to do it. That's, that's, that's pretty original, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, I figured... Okay, so, so, okay, so the answer to that question is... Oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm going to ask you my question, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, go on. Awesome, right. I just want you to tell your most funniest bike industry or World Cup story. Uh, oh, um, we love a story. Oh, Dave, there's, there's too many there. <laughs> uh, pick a PG one then. Say again. You can pick a PG one if you want. A pair of guidance one. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh man. <laughs> you know what? Actually, right. Just quickly. So. Yeah. I was at Fort William um, over the weekend, obviously. Uh, and on the last episode or two I sort of said to anyone you know if you're heading up make sure you come over and say hello it'd be like really great to meet some of the people that listen because obviously it's got a bit of a platform behind this thing now yeah. Yeah. so this lady comes over on Saturday afternoon um, and says yeah came over is it Davey I'm just like yeah yeah Davey yeah. Oh, really nice yeah. to meet you I, I love listening to your podcast it's great me and my kids listen to it on the way to school <laughs> <laughs> and I was like okay. oh I'm so sorry <laughs> Yeah, I need to be careful, actually, David. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I could actually give you a, a Fort William-related question. Seems that's that's quite timely. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, God, it's a bit like kind of people that come on Graham Norton, isn't it? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'm just it, not as camp. The, the, chair, the, the chair's going to fall over. Um, so, basically, um, I was sharing a room with Alex Rankin. Alex Rankin is the legend that made Sprung and Earth videos. And um, you know him, Davy? Yes, I know Alex Rankin. <laughs> so Alex, so Alex, so I'm sharing it with Alex, and obviously uh, Fort William. There's always a lot of uh, there was a lot of beer involved back in the day because when you did a magazine, kind of you know you didn't have to post anything the same day or anything like that. So uh, we were in the Kraken Hotel, which is on the right. As you go in. Uh, I come in. I come in. I, I don't know what time it was three, four o'clock in the morning uh, on the on the Saturday because the race is on the Sunday. And uh, I kind of brush my teeth and decide to chuck a bit of water over Alex who's in bed and he goes, you fucking do that again, I'll smash your face in. So obviously <laughs> I just filled the bucket or the, the bin which is in the bathroom full of water and 
I just chucked the whole bucket of water of Alex and giggled, went to bed. Uh, I heard some fucking noises from Alex. He's obviously saying, oh, God, here we go. Anyway, nothing happened. So um, I kind of pulled the duvet over, and next thing I kind of go to set my clock. And uh, next thing I heard something, something like a brick hit me in the face. And uh, <laughs> he basically thrown his steel toe cap boot at me and... Uh, it just caught me straight in the middle of my face, and uh, I went to kind of feel my nose. My nose wasn't there. What? And uh, yeah, I kind of switched on the lights, and it was like a fountain of blood came out of my face. And Alex was panicking. The walls were covered in blood, and uh, it was like I was kind of choking because it was I was like I was like choking on blood, and so like we fucking ran downstairs and. Uh, we went. We just got in the car straight to the hospital and uh, managed, managed to kind of stop it by then. And oh my god! And, and the woman in the hospital said, uh, "She's like, oh my god." She said, "I said, look, you really need to put it back in place because because uh, you know I can't go home with my nose kind of like Steve Pete's kind of or far worse than that." <laughs> and uh, she says, "I can't do anything about it." And I said, "Look, you have to." And so she kind of kind of sorted it all out and it kind of yeah, it kind of it was in loads of pieces at the time and um Jeez. so yeah can i do that go back to actually still go back to the hotel at like seven in the morning and then mike rose who's entered the came into the came into the room because we had like an hour of sleep mm. he came into the room and the, all the walls was just covered in blood and he was like oh can, can you imagine walking into that it was like <laughs> so there's a fort william story for you classic <laughs> jesus i bet does he still feel bad do you think Ranking. Yeah. Uh, no, it's cool. He, uh, I went to his wedding. He came to my wedding. It's all everything's great. He's a good. He's a really good friend. Brilliant. And, uh, Brilliant. And but there's of, many. There's there's many Fort William stories. I can I, assure you. I can imagine, mate. I can imagine. <laughs> um, uh, right. Your chance just to set a quick question for the next guest who you don't know oh, who it's going to be. Uh, uh, that's put me on the spot, really. Um, I think Ed had had some time to prepare that one. Like. The words hadn't even come out of her mouth. What's your question? He was like, fuck my avoid, women's top ten. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, it's going to uh, be tough I, to find a guest who can do that one who's not going to get any shit for it. Um, we could ask him a serious question. I'd like to know maybe how technical could World Cups be? Oh, nice. What what would be the yeah? What, to to what to how how much more technical will in in the kind of light of when when's he coming on? Uh, the next week it looks like probably in, you know maybe maybe in the light of people whinging about Fort William route section, which wasn't really that hard. How technical should World Cups really be? I don't know. That's a bit serious, but like, yeah, maybe no, just for that. Yeah, yeah, how technical should World Cups? I just jot it down because I usually forget. World Cup, World Cup tries to be awesome. It's a bit boring, though, isn't it? Fuck nah, it. it's all right, mate. It's all good. That's fine. Loves it. Right. Well. Good stuff. It's been a blast, dude. Really appreciate you doing this. Um, no, thanks for uh, thanks for that. I can go back to my snooze now. You can just quickly. Um, if anyone doesn't already follow, where can people find more information? Have you got anything you want to promote or shout out or anything like that? Just uh, oh shit! Actually, we're uh, we've got. I'm working on a documentary at the minute. Um, oh, I'm working on yeah. I've probably got loads of things I could have told you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> if you hadn't rattled, you hadn't rattled on about motocross, uh, <laughs> I'm working on a doc- documentary at the minute uh, about Whitey and Gwyn. Oh, awesome! Um, so that's it. It's, yeah, it's pretty. It's it's pretty serious actually. It's not a kind of it's not a ride in, you know, it's not kind of people slashing burns and okay. roots and stuff like that. It's a, it's a very kind of sort of behind the scenes kind of look at, I mean, I, I wrote a story in 2007 because America had never had a World Cup, World Cup downhill winner. Okay. And I wrote this feature and I got quite a bit of shit about it. I mean, there's loads of people involved in it, Chris Conroy, uh, mm. you know, America hadn't had this winner. Anyway, basically in 2008, Gwyn arrives. Yeah. Um, so the story is about is about the arrival of Gwyn and what he did, and it's also about you know the arrival of of um, of YT and what they did for the mountain bike industry and what they did for their country and stuff like that. So they, they you know they kind of they kind of live parallel lives for a while. From you, know, they both 
you know, Gwyn arrives and YT arrive in 2008. And um, it comes to, you know, the alliance between Gwyn and YT and the fact that they went to, to Lords and, you know, they got first first race they did, they got first place. Mm. And, you know, it's one of the first brands that did that. So it's, a, it's quite a serious kind of wow. look. And it's got, you know, it's got the YT owners. It's got Gwyn, it's got Martin Whiteley, it's got... Um, uh, Stickman from Troy. There's loads, there's loads of people involved in in the story, and uh, yeah, that's coming out in the next few weeks. So, is it really? wow, that's up. awesome, dude! I, I can't wait to watch keep, that. Keep an eye out for that. Probably like something said, we could have spoke about would have been um, direct consumer bikes, but yeah, that yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, like I said, it's it's quite it's quite serious. It's not, yeah. it won't be everyone's cup of tea, but it'll be it's pretty in depth. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Amazing! Can't wait, man. So yeah, everyone. Yeah. Keep an eye out. Simple as that. And people will be able to see that on obviously Dirt website and yeah. lots of stuff. Yeah, cool. totally. That'll be in the next couple of weeks. Excellent. Yeah. Cool, dude. Well, again, it's been an absolute pleasure. Really appreciate you doing this. It's been good to sit and chat and uh, keep you guys out there yep. posted on this e-bike ride, which is going to happen pretty soon. Uh, I'll I'll hold you to that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Help. Hold me as hard as you want, mate. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. On that note. <laughs> Well, do you know what? I was I was actually holding Yian uh, Yian Williams today. We were on a shoot today, and right. uh, he, he was basically holding me tight because he came around this corner and uh, hit the tree and just uh, we were we were kind of rolling around on the floor together. It's quite funny. <laughs> Brilliant, right, dude? Um, thanks, Davy. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, and I'll uh, no doubt speak to you soon. Thank you very much. See you, buddy. Bye bye. Bye bye. And there you go, guys, episode number 28 in the bag, done and dusted. Hopefully you liked the episode. If you did, please head over to iTunes, leave a review, and if you can, just share the episode with your friends. You know, you can head over to Instagram, it's at The Hook It Podcast, Facebook, at The Hook It Podcast. You can find the episode there too, just hit the share button, it really helps. Like, it's, it's great to have people engaging and involved in these episodes. The more, the merrier. Um, and also, I want to mention... The cool thing with the media guys is I want to keep having them back on. So yes, we could have gone into plenty more detail on a lot of those topics, but it's cool to maybe revisit it in six months time or whatever. So there's a bit more of a um, a bit more of a conversation to be had in more time, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to keep revisiting these guys, um, keep checking with the media guys, especially when there's new things happening in the sport. I think that'll be a cool uh, a cool thing to do with a podcast and that's kind of why I'm enjoying doing it too you know it's not just about a one banger just having them on for one show and, and that's it and keep an eye out because the media guys will be keeping keeping checking in and keeping doing stuff with us um, looks like I'm going on an e-bike ride too so I'll keep you guys up to date with that over on social media and I think that's about it again huge thank you for listening in huge thank you for the support and have an awesome week don't forget to tell your friends. It's been emotional. Peace out. See you after Lords too with uh, the next guest, who's a, another biggie. Word. Bye.